do you eat differently on your workout days? So you, you do one resistance day a week. Do you eat differently yeah. on that day? No, no, I would uh, I just eat one meal a day, one cooked meal a day. That that's what I've come down to. Mm. And I probably and I fast for most of the rest. So I do this intermittent fasting story. And right. so that I will eat a big meal with with lots of animal protein and animal fat, a little bit of vegetables, maybe some eggs, cheese. And my diet's very simple. I only eat meat, fish, eggs, dairy, nuts, and a tiny amount of vegetables, essentially no fruits, mm. no desserts, no sugars, no alcohol. I drink water and tea and coffee. And that that's a it's it's an incredibly simple diet. Yeah. Mm. It's just meat and fish and dairy, and that, that's it. And I get, I really enjoy it. it for me, it's not, right. it's not tiresome eating that food. I really enjoy it. I look forward to my meals, um, I, even I, though it's incredibly repetitious. I'm eating the same thing two or three times a week, but it absolutely doesn't worry me. Yeah. Right. And so you said one meal a day. Can I ask like, when in the day is that? It could be anything. It's usually breakfast or lunch because that's when we do our cooking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So it's at, and it's occasionally it's the evenings, but my, by and large we don't cook in the nights because then you go to bed rather late and our age we need to get more sleep. So, <laughs> so yes. it's either breakfast or or lunch, and then I'll go twenty four hours without with with snacking, but the next meal might be lunch the next day. Right. And it it doesn't worry me. I mean, if I don't eat for twenty four hours, that that's fine, which I could never have done on a high carbohydrate diet. Yes. So can I ask, do you take any supplements? I do, actually. And I don't normally discuss this because I don't want to, because it's not scientifically based. And I kind of like to promote what's scientifically based. So I, I think when I was in, well, so let's say 10 years ago, I mean, I would definitely not have used a supplement because I was trained in medicine and you don't need supplements, which is which I think is nonsensical. Mm. What I do take is vitamin D3 and K2. And I think there's, mm. there's pretty good evidence that if there's going to be evidence of the way you can protect your coronary arteries from supplements, that those are two that can help. You, you, vitamin D3 has really come to the fore with COVID-19. Mm. But taking vitamin D3 by itself without K2 is probably not such a good idea because that drives calcium into your arteries and the K2 directs the calcium into your bones. So that's, those are the two that I think are important. I take magnesium and zinc because also they've come to the fore in the COVID-19. And uh, that, that's kind of pretty much, I do occasionally take some vitamin C and some vitamin B. And sorry, because I'm taking metformin for my diabetes, I do take vitamin B12 because metformin competes with B12. And then finally, I do take a sort of supplement with all the, the, the electrolytes and those. I also take that. And I do that for one reason. <laughs> A great colleague of mine who's a cardiologist, he said, have you ever seen this scientific paper, Tim? And I looked at it. And there was a clinical trial where they were looking at statin drugs, cholesterol-lowering drugs, and the control group were given this multivitamin. <laughs> and, and the control group did better than the statins, or almost as well. Right. So then I thought, well, maybe that multivitamin has something as well. And, and, and the other point is that they're absolutely safe. There's never been one death reported from multivitamin supplementation. So even if it doesn't work, it's, it's pretty safe. So I do those things. And if, evident, if more evidence became available, I would take other stuff. But at the moment, it's D3, K2, magnesium, zinc, and B12 with occasional addition of other stuff. Right. So I would just think, I mean, you, you said you do running. and So you probably get out quite a lot sunny in South Africa. So do you not feel you get enough sunlight to create your D3? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of my other people I consult who really understands supplements, he said, he said that the only people who have really high vitamin D3 are the surfers and the Swiss people who are out in the, in the sun all day. Mm. And they have values which are like three times normal. So we normally take a value of 40 as the normal and they have values of 120. And if you can get values up to 120, that, that sound might be advisable. So the, 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 the values that we take as normal are very low. And probably we should be at 60 or 80 units. And I think for that, you need sunshine and probably, probably supplements. But you're quite right. The best way to produce it is, is through, through sunshine. Now, I get my sun. I try to get sun every day. That's right. 
Right. So, so can you tell me, so we talked about resistance training, you do resistance. So how much running do you, do you, do you do other things? Do you do swimming, biking, or are you still running? No. So, so what I discovered was cross, the, the group called CrossFit. And ah, to me, yeah. that's the best program that there is. It's, and this is someone who taught physical education in a sense <laughs> all my life. And it's no question that in my view, CrossFit is way ahead of everyone mm. because it uses gymnastic movements and it uses your whole body. And you don't get the same repetitive activity just doing day in and day out. And the beauty of CrossFit is you never know what you're going to do. And as I said, you use all your muscles, all your body, and in explosive high intensity work. And it's so it's pretty tough. So that's the, and then I continue to run, and I run three times a week, and I do gym twice a week. So those are the five days, and I need two days to recover because I'm seven, <laughs> 71 and a half. So I need a bit of time downtime to recover. Yes, I can imagine. I said CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, so I have seen CrossFit. I'm sorry, I have not done it. I mean, it's yeah. So it it's like high intensity as fast as hard as you can go for. Uh, yeah, and what we do is it's usually half an hour warm up, and, yeah. and then it's about twenty minutes of, and you do stations. You do probably four different exercises, and what they so clever. What the guy Greg Glassman who drew it up was so clever at he. He would do the cardiac work at the same time that you're doing weights so that you will do you'll do skipping or running or cycling not sorry not running because we don't use but you'll be skipping or cycling and other activities like pulling a, a, like on a, a, a rower etc and then you go straight from that with a heart rate of 160 and you'll lift weights right and you'll do and that's absolutely exhausting when you combine the two because now you come back and you come back to the rower or the or the cycle, and your heart rate's been 160 for, for three, five minutes, and you're now back on the bicycle, and you start with a heart rate of 160. It's really tough. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the point that you keep your heart rate high, even though you're doing doing these gymnastic activities. And I mean, I never knew that that simple activities like getting up from the ground and going down on the ground, what they call a burpee. It's mm -hmm. one of the most difficult activities, the most demanding activities you can do. Yes. And when you do it, <laughs> and you do 10 of them, and then you got to do another 10 in two minutes or three minutes, that's, that's pretty tough. And to me, that's really good exercise for, for an old guy like myself, getting down on the ground. Because one of the problems that as you age is you can't get off the ground. And mm -hmm. if you have a fall, you're stuck. So getting yeah. off the ground, and that's another test, is how quickly you can get off the ground. Is, that'll tell you what your longevity is like. <laughs> yes yeah it, it's amazing like the, how fast can you stand up and standing up without yeah. touching the floor with your hands and stuff yeah. like that yeah so that's yeah so um professor Nobs, so thank you so much i really enjoyed our our talk today um can you tell people where they can find out more about yourself and and uh, the notes foundation thanks very much yeah they could go onto the notes foundation website that's kind mm -hmm. of where most of my stuff is today and you can see see what we do and there are certain blogs there but but it also directs you to our nutrition network and the other group of people that that we work with around the world so that's probably the best you can follow me on twitter i'm at prof tim noakes that's mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to be controversial not controversial i like to attack issues that are controversial and that gets me mm -hmm. into trouble lots of the time but <laughs> it's it, I, what you get there is not going to be mainstream it's going to be the other opinion which which is what i like to do yeah well that is yes no that's really good um to to, to have other opinions as well because there is yeah. a danger with um kind of unification of search engines and things like that that the results that get returned are maybe curated they, yeah they, they select it i mean we, we i just cannot watch the news anymore it's just all the mainstream media just is just promoting lies and it's it's terrible if you actually understand what they're doing and you see you see through it it's very frustrating oh. so people have to be taught to think again what's happened with mainstream media is you're told what you can think you may only think this there's no longer reporters saying this is what he says and that's what he says and you make up your mind it's all this is what we tell you you have to believe and people really have to understand that and that's what we've had with nutrition Mm. We've been told this is the truth and no one else has allowed their opinion. 
And I went to court to give the opposite opinion and to prove that what I was saying was scientifically valid. Right. Excellent. Yes. And hopefully it was just that you were before your time and that now people are realizing <laughs> <laughs> that this yeah. that the, the keto diet is is a healthy diet. So uh, thank you once again so much for your time. And uh, I will let you know when we uh, release this. Fantastic. Thanks. Sir. Have a lovely chat. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.